we're about to make this amazing chunky sweater together. I'm gonna take you along the entire process of how to make this super duper chunky sweater. I hope you love it as much as I do. I've been seeing them all over Pinterest, so I decided to make my own. But please send me your pictures because I can't wait to see how they turn out. Okay, let's start with supplies. You're gonna need chunky yarn. I used about six balls, scissors, and a measuring tape. I really recommend the yarn I used. I can link some others below. I got mine at Joann's, which only cost me about $50, when in reality, if you buy the sweater itself, they cost around $300, so big steal. Here I'm measuring from shoulder to shoulder, which is about 19 inches, and then from the top of my neck to my belly button, which was about 18 inches. Now we're gonna figure out the size and dimension of our sweater. We're starting off with our shoulder measurement. For me, that was about 19 inches. Because I want my sweater to be a little bigger, a little slouchier, I increased this by three inches, making the base of my sweater 22 inches wide. And then for the length of the sweater, from my neck until my belly button, this was 18 inches, and I kept it at that. So the 22 inches ended up being about 17 loops and the 18 inches ended up being about 14, 15 loops. I focus more on your measurement than your loops, but try to write these down so you can stay consistent. Okay, the star is where we're starting, which is in the blue. So here we are on the knitting. You're gonna twist your yarn and pull the long yarn through the loop you just created. This is going to create a slip knot. You'll have a short tail and your working yarn, which is attached to the ball. You'll pull your working yarn through your loop and continue to do that. The loops you're creating are gonna form a chain. I'm gonna continue doing this till you reach your back measurement. So again, mine's about 22 inches, which ended up being 17 loops. To create our first row, you loop your yarn through those holes that we just created and do that for the entire piece. All right, and then you're gonna head backwards. going to continue making rows going left and right as you see your knitting will increase in size. Here I'm adding a new color which is super simple. All you do is take your new ball of yarn and start looping your fabric through. Make sure to leave a little bit of a tail so you can tuck it in later. My tail's a little shorter than I'd like so I'd recommend doing a little longer. All right and then head backwards. And keeping your working yarn towards the direction you're working in really makes it an easier process. Once you've reached your desired length for the back, we're going to start on section B, which will become our front panel. So this will be 18 inches long and it'll be 11 inches wide, which is about 9 or 8 loops. What we did here was we took the width of A, which is about 22 inches and 17 loops, and divided that by half to create our front two panels. So for this front piece on B, we're working with 9 loops. So get to 9 loops and stop. We're gonna pretend like those eight loops to the right don't exist and just head back left like nothing ever happened and continue making our rows. This is gonna form our front panel. I'm adding green, spice it up. Love this color, it's so beautiful. I'll also make sure to link the exact colors that I used below. You're gonna keep doing this until it reaches the 18 inches long. Then we get to the end, you're gonna create a new loop and another loop. Then you're gonna take the first one and cross it over the second. Create a new loop, cross the first one over the second. And you continue doing this. It creates a braided effect, but it starts to end each loop so that you don't need to cut it or knot it. Again, New loop, cross over the old one. And to end it, make sure it's not too tight and then cut a piece and loop that on through. And there you go. This is what we're looking like. That's the front panel over the back panel. 
Now we're going to work on section C, which is the exact same thing, but on the right side. So for the blue, we just do the exact same thing, loop all of them, and continue till you get to the end, and then you can see me casting off again, finishing. We have our entire body. During the entire process, keep trying on your piece, making sure it's the right length, right width, now we're going to work on section D and E, which are our sleeves. So you're going to want to take a very long piece of yarn and start almost sewing the two panels together. You just get a hole, loop the yarn through to the front and back panel. Here we're starting the sleeve. You're going to find the ends of the knitting and pull a new loop through them. So in total for me, this ended up being about 14 loops, seven in the front and seven in the back. You might wanna jot down how many it took you so that way you can stay consistent with your other sleeve. And then you're gonna knit like you have been, just going around and around. It's a little trickier. I recommend doing it on the floor instead of up in the air, but whatever feels most comfortable. I'm adding some more yarn in here and continuing. You can see I'm trying it on. I'm really happy with the length and I'm gonna start my cuff. So to start your cuff, you're gonna take two loops in one hand and take your working yarn and pull it through two loops in one hand, take your working yarn and pull it through. Here you're decreasing, so you're combining loops to make it smaller, so you get that really beautiful volume from the sleeve into the cuff. Two loops, and then the working yarn. And then we're just gonna knit those as normal once you get to about five or six, depending on how many you had before. Again, maybe you want your cuff to be bigger, but you can't go much smaller, otherwise your hand will not fit through. Okay, we're getting down to the very end of the sleeve and you can just see here I'm casting off like I would on the other ones. Do a new loop, take the old one over the new one, cut the tail and loop it through. We have our first sleeve. We're gonna do the exact same thing to the opposite side. So here I'm using green because that's the color I wanted to use for my sleeve. I'm creating the beginning of the sleeve. and then I'm switching colors into cream. And then once I get to the same length as on the other sleeve, I'll start decreasing. So taking those two loops and turning them into one and creating our cuff. And then finally, casting off that sleeve. And right here, what I'm doing is making my tails a touch shorter if they were very long and starting to loop them through the fabric. You kind of want to hide them and not knot them too tight, but sometimes you can make the tails help fill in gaps that are a little looser in your knitting. So here I'm pulling it through the inside so that way I can knot it. I wouldn't recommend knotting it on the outside and being really loose with your knots. Don't worry, it won't come undone, I promise. Thanks so much for watching, guys.